Monster, Destroyer, Hero, Avenger. Let's take a look at the Hulk and give him a sciency spec bio based retouch. Hello everyone! You know the Hulk, right? Marvel's greatest powerhouse, who gets even stronger the angrier he is. Fun character! And now we'll try to reimagine him and his powers, origins and fascinating physiology in our style. Big thanks to Jackson Junger for commissioning this episode, and if you like it, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons. And now, without further ado, let's get started! All we ever do, so we tell ourselves, is for some degree of good no matter how big or small it may be. So, when that attempt at doing good brings more pain and sorrow than we could have possibly expected, then what is left? The story of Bruce Banner, a personal friend of mine, takes us first to the past, to his father, Dr. Brian Banner, who conducted a series of experiments that, he hoped, would provide a potential mechanism for cleaning areas affected by either nuclear disasters or the use of nuclear weaponry. His work focused on radiotrophic fungi, which absorb ionizing radiation as a source of energy. By using Teratomyces oikodomos and Titanomyces emery to mediate horizontal gene transfer, these properties were to be transferred into human cells potentially saving thousands of lives placed at risk by nuclear fallout. Furthermore, these cells were intended to adapt to the morphology of the human cells surrounding them, thus replacing damaged tissue and allowing radiation victims to survive long enough to be taken to a hospital and receiving medical attention. Unfortunately, said experiments were unsuccessful, and even worse, as we would find out much later, Dr. Banner himself had been infected by the fungal cells he was working on. There are no records of him exhibiting expected symptoms, a result of the lack of exposure to radiation, but the infection was still there, and it would be transmitted eventually to his son. In his adulthood, Brian's son, Dr. Bruce Banner, would end up conducting a similar type of research unaware of the fact that his body was infected with a variant of the experimental, still dormant fungus. Then, disaster struck. Dr. Banner was accidentally exposed to a lethal dose of gamma radiation, triggering the activation of the fungi's infective cycle. Upon being irradiated, the fungal cells swelled to a massive extent and quickly began a cycle of asexual reproduction striping down Dr. Banner's own body for resources, completely overtaking it in a matter of minutes. As a side effect, Dr. Banner's body, while transformed, became a green color due to the activation of chloroplasts, artificially inserted in the fungus as an alternate way to absorb photons and provide energy to the fungal cells. At this point, I find it worth mentioning that Dr. Banner has had a history of psychological issues, having developed a form of dissociative identity disorder as a result of his traumatic childhood. Mind you, this is not an indictment on Dr. Banner's capacity, as he was undergoing psychotherapy and seemed to have found a good life-work balance that led to a stable condition. But the extremely traumatic nature of the Gamma incident caused a deterioration of his mental state with the following attempted capture of his person by armed forces and the resulting alienation preventing him from receiving the help he needed. Among the alternate identities, or alters of Dr. Banner, one of the most prominent, and that brought to the forefront as a result of the incident, is a childlike, yet extremely aggressive, alter that calls himself the Hulk. It seems Thanks to the deep bond formed between the fungal cells and Dr. Banner's own nervous system included, the fungal cells reacted to the dissociative event by forming what Dr. Banner's alter needed. Protection. The fungal mass formed a dense layer of armor around him. 
These cells presented fungal scales, hard protective structures that, stacked across layer after layer of cells, formed a hard tissue that made Dr. Banner able to resist a lot of damage, while heavily dulling his pain and tactile response in the process. Furthermore, the fungal cells that cover Dr. Banner simulate an extension of his own muscle cells and myofibrils, giving him a huge degree of physical strength. This allows the Altered Banner, or the Hulk, to not only lift and throw heavy objects, but also to lift his own massive body despite its weight, allowing him to run and even leap large distances without issues. It should be noted, this state shows a high degree of muscle strength compared to other animals of comparable sizes due to a mix of constant cellular replacement and the fact that the Hulk does not need to satisfy the needs of other living beings, such as survival or obtaining energy from the environment, meaning his body can expend all energy necessary into sheer strength and regeneration. Interestingly, it seems a further aggravated emotional state will increase the response of the fungal cells increasing the reproduction rates and thus the degree of muscle cells present in the Hulk's body, effectively making the Hulk stronger the angrier he gets. This overtaking of Banner's body by the fungal cells meant that whenever he… come on, I'm not saying this. I don't care if that's how he says it, it's done. Ah, fine. Whenever Dr. Banner hulks out, the fungal cells will be able to immediately recover from any injuries he has suffered by using mass from the environment to replace the damaged tissue, doing so faster than any disease or toxin is capable of causing damage to it, very likely including the effects of the gamma radiation that initiated the reaction. This also prevents its body from tarring by constantly replacing tissues to prevent the accumulation of the metabolic byproducts associated with fatigue. By absorbing gamma rays from the environment, the fungal cells no longer even need an external source of energy to survive, allowing Dr. Banner to remain functioning without food, water or even oxygen for a while, although food will eventually be required for the cells to produce more biomass and keep replacing cells damaged in the process, especially given how the initial reaction used Dr. Banner's own body as fuel. As of now, it is unclear how much, if anything, of Dr. Banner's body is still composed of genetically human cells. As long as environmental gamma radiation is available, Dr. Banner will… <sighs> hawk out whenever he undergoes emotional or physical stress. However, the alters that have formed as a result of Dr. Banner's DID will heavily affect the result of this transformation. Notable examples include a conscious, eloquent, yet no less aggressive alter known as Joe Fixit, an even more violent alter that calls himself the Devil Hulk, and even, after returning to proper psychological treatment, a more stable, healthier alter that calls himself <sighs> Professor Hulk. Yet, the study of the correlation between mental state and this type of alterations was, sadly, not at an end. We mentioned the chase of Banner by the armed forces, and it seems they have managed, to a degree, to replicate the condition seen in Dr. Banner. Both by accidental and experimental exposure, more gamma mutates have sprung forth. Without the DID seen in Dr. Banner, the transformation seems to be either voluntary or permanent, and the effects of the transformation are extremely varied. A man surrounded by geniuses, yet feeling lacking in that department, had the cells form a much larger, potent, yet not quite stable brain. Another, more similar to the Hulk himself, became capable of weaponizing gamma rays by redirecting them through the fungal cells. Further alterations to the formula have even induced the development of highly flammable compounds that ignite on contact with oxygen, or full-on transformations into monstrous beings showing features and traits from many different organisms. 
Lastly, we'd like to add a, well, disturbing discovery. Dr. Banner has seemingly come back from death more than once, which at first we thought to be a result of the regenerative properties of the fungal cells, but he has recently opened up to us about the existence of, and I'm quoting, a green door he uses to come back to life, and which only gamma mutates can see and use. Added to a previously reported ability to see ghosts, we thought these were only a result of the notable stress he was under, but we shouldn't rule out anything yet. While current research is still underway, we fear the high gamma concentration first achieved with the fungal cells has created an effect similar to that observed in omega particles, but as mentioned, research is still underway. And that's it for speculative biology look into the Hulk. So with this one, we had a lot of comments giving cool ideas on how it could work, with many of said ideas involving the use of one of the funky fungi we've used on the channel before, something we ended up doing on this video. However, similar to the Ghost Rider episode, Jackson and I went with a look much closer to that of the comics compared to a more body horror style that is traditional on our channel. But that doesn't mean we won't be seeing something like that too down the line, as an extra bit of fun. As for the rest of it, Comic Book Gamma was a very interesting thing to work with, because it has approximately one thing in common with real life Gamma, mostly its name, so it was interesting to see how an organism could display all of Hulk's abilities, as well as those of other Gamma empowered characters, by still using Gamma as a source of energy, but not of the powers themselves. So I hope y'all enjoyed this one, and do let me know if you'd like to see other Gamma infused Marvel characters, or anything else explored in this style. Here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode, which wow, there was a lot of you, wasn't there? Thank you all so much for asking for this one. And also, Thank you to our researchers and research associates who support us through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Remember you too can join in if you want to support our channel, and you get some nice perks too, like seeing all of our creatures and videos ahead of time and helping mold them into shape. Or you can also like, subscribe, or write a comment telling me any type of creature you'd like me to give the spec evo treatment in the show, any of those really help the channel a lot. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.